Hey all you submariners out there, this is Matt, and welcome to episode number 13 of my Elite Difficulty Cold Waters playthrough. So far we spent 80 days at war, sunk a total of 117 vessels, and a total tonnage of 713,395 tons of Soviet shipping sent to the bottom. Uh, this is episode number 13, like I said, and it's quite fitting, considering that we're going to have a little bit of bad luck later on in this episode. But for right now, we're just going to continue on with where we were, which is going rogue in the Norwegian Sea and the Barents Sea. Trying to uh, sink... It. We're ignoring the, uh, the TLAM mission, once again, and uh, trying to sink as, many, as much Soviet shipping as we can. So we're heading up to the Norwegian Sea here in order to hopefully encounter any Soviet vessels that we can see. So I see a, a, a submarine encounter group there, so I, I finally do get the encounter. Uh, sonar contact bearing 340, our heading is 282, so they'll be about 60 degrees off to the right, close to 15,000 yards, and initiate this engagement. For ultra quiet. We start at 600 feet and a speed of 26 knots, which is far from ideal. As far as depth, it's great, but as far as the speed, no, I would much rather start at 5 knots, but uh, it's just the way that the encounter happened, because I was chasing the group, so I ended up going at full speed when I encountered it. Immediately, I'll adjust my depth to 700 feet. I can do that quite easily, since there's no bottom here right now. Um, as far as I can tell, it's quite far down, so I'm going to use a little bit more of the water if I can. There's a strong duct at about 245 feet. Um, I'm going to avoid that for right now. I'm already deep. I'm going to stay down here and, and listen to what I can possibly Con, find. Our new contact bearing. Three, four, so once six, my speed gets down to about zero, six knots, one. I'm able to uh, hear a contact. It'd be off to my right. I'm going to classify it first. It's quite clearly going to be a submarine, considering that was a submarine engagement uh, encounter group. Con, Looks son. like a tango. So we'll just uh, fast forward here to when I'm in a better position to shoot on this on this tango. Um, I'm not going to waste any time. Uh, sonar shows in at about six point six and a half thousand yards. Uh, my solution's 54%, which for me is, an, is, is enough to shoot at. I'll put a weapon down the bearing that Sonar says that the, the Tango's at, and uh, hopefully at some point along that bearing, uh, the, the torpedo will encounter the Tango. So we'll skip ahead. Uh, now we have a much better idea of where the Tango is. And uh, he's at about eight eight and a half thousand yards, so fairly close to where uh, Sonar had him to begin with. With the wire, I'm able to guide this torpedo in, so there's no Gun, there's no hope for this guy. Sierra one, last bearing three, five, seven, contact breaking up. So that's it for the tango, and uh, so we'll just skip ahead here a little bit more. I've uh, waited just a little bit and sped up time to see if there's any other targets around, and eventually. Uh, decided there were none. Uh, there's nothing else in the area. When I leave combat, we see that that Tango was the only vessel on this engagement. So we'll just go on to the next one. Uh, the Admiral thanks me, but this is not the, the mission. So we'll continue on with searching for, for encounter groups here. And uh, we're approached by another submarine encounter group. Bearing 279, our heading is, two, is 300, so they'll be off to our left by about 20 degrees, close to 15,000 yards, Great and engage. Quiet. We have a contact Sierra 1 immediately, so I'll get uh, busy here classifying that. Looks kind of like a, like a Charlie, so it might be a Victor. Yeah, it looks like a Victor 3. Had a, uh, I put kind of a funny edit there. I, I do apologize for that. I should have left a little bit more of it. I was a little bit too quick on the draw, putting that transition in there. Uh, so the Victor 3, uh, I feel like I'm in its baffles right now, and I'm turning to to uh, point in its, in its direction. Con, sonar, new contact bearing. Two, just seven, before six, I shoot, seven, eight, I uh, zero, two. get another contact, so that torpedo's off, and now I'll classify the next one, which appears to be Con, the same sonar, thing. Zero, so two, it looks like two Victor 3s on this submarine. engagement so far. So we'll skip ahead to the point where this torpedo is actually closing on the first Victor 3. Uh, He's cavitating like crazy, and uh, 
trying to evade, but there's no there's no way he's getting out of it. Well, I still have the wire. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra one last con dive at eight. So that's zero, it for Sierra zero, eight, one. Dive, I'm at a depth of 800 feet now, which is I, is another is right in the the yeah, band of depth here where I'm the I most sir. comfortable operating at, where I don't have to worry about cavitating at flank speed, and um, also uh, more more easily able to hear. Um, other contacts out there uh, at this at this depth. The, the, the deeper you go, the the better your your solution usually ends up being. Uh, in this case, the ambient noise is not very high anyway, only at 78 decibels, so that probably doesn't matter a whole lot. But now that I've activated the weapon, I've fired at Sierra 2. I'm going to uh, make the weapon uh, go a little bit more shallow to be in line with where Sonar has Sierra 2 located. So once again, I'll just steer this weapon to make sure that uh, it, it ignores the, the noise maker and heads right for the target. Sonar lost contact. Sierra two, last bearing two, six, six. Contact so that's up. it for Sierra two. And I'll stick around a little bit just to see if there's anything else around Come the right area because usually two, six, I deal with nuke boat wolf packs of three. So I'm expecting some something else to be around here, but after I travel all the way to the Vic Sierra 2 and still don't uh, have any other contacts, I'm pretty sure there's nothing else around here. So, and I'm going at, at uh, I'm, I'm speeding up time here a little bit too, just to make things go a little bit faster. Con helm, steady course. So it doesn't seem like there's anything else in the area, and it looks like there was only those th two Victor 3s to worry about. So we'll just head back out and uh, see if we can go for those surface groups to see off into the Barents Sea. Looks like they both have uh, detected me or are heading in my direction, which means I shouldn't have to really look around for the next one. So the contact bearing 123, our heading's 109, so they'll be about 14 to 15 degrees off to the right. Rig ship for ultra quiet. We have two contacts right off the bat, Sierra 1 and Sierra 2. I'm at 50 feet and I'm pre pretty sure these are con surface contacts, so I'm going to go up to 45 feet and use my ESM mast and periscope just to uh, take a look at these guys. The detection threshold is high, but I tend to ignore that anyway. It's High or not, I need to do what I need to do, right? I need to take a look at these guys, so. A little ways off there, obviously. I'll, no, nothing more than like a shimmer um, in the background. A little bit of a shadow, and that's about it. wasn't sure exactly where Master 1 was, because Master 2 is the one that I just spotted, so I want, there's, there's a helicopter right there, and uh, I wasn't sure where Master 1 was, so I wanted to check with that. He's right here, once again, uh, a fair distance away. Yeah, let's go. I've had them both spotted, I have a good range on both of them, so now I'm going to dive. Uh, right now, Make the bottom... Four, five, zero, eight, dive by. The bottom's at... Uh, we're looking at like 700 feet. Sorry, I'm having a hard time seeing it right here. Uh, but anyway, I choose about 500 feet as a good depth. To leave me a bit of uh, moving, a little bit of room to maneuver. Don't want to be too close to the bottom because that can change pretty quick if uh, you. Uh, if you, you know, go into an area where the bottom comes up quite quickly, next escort. thing you know, you could be uh, lawn darting. So you want to avoid that as much as possible, Con obviously. So I give bearing. myself some One, breathing space two, there. Three. I've, uh, three. I've classified contact Master 2 as a Kanan. Uh, Master 1. I think also 
the master one's a Kara, and now I'm trying to classify Sierra 3, which I believe is a submarine, because I was uh, looking Sierra through the periscope and didn't see anything at all in the area submarine. of Master 1. So, I was quite sure that was going to be a submarine anyway. I've already launched two weapons, one at the Cannon, one at the Kara, and then I'm going to fire one at the November as well. It looks like the first weapon that I fired that I had intended for the Kara is actually going to be heading for the November, which is fine. It doesn't matter to me either way. And in fact, I would always classify it a, a, uh, a submerged contact as more of a threat than a surface contact. So, I'm happy to go for the November 1st. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra 3, last bearing 1. Weapon number three, 1 has acquired six, on the Canaan. So I'm going to switch my focus over to that one right now. And just, I'll keep an eye on weapon number two because I expect that the uh, sinking November is probably going to suck that up. Contact on Master 2, bearing zero, nine, seven. We'll skip ahead now one, to the point one, where uh, I have, the weapon has finally engaged the Kara. Just steer it in to make sure that it hits and uh, Gun, doesn't so waste any more time. Contact. Master one, last bearing one, two, zero. Contact breaking up. It looks like the bottom's at 578. Sorry, I can I can kind of read that now. Uh, so it was at 500 feet. That gave me about 78 feet, about 80 feet of clearance, which is fine, which is enough. You just you got to make sure you keep your eye on that, eh, uh, to avoid. Uh, running your, your boat into the bottom, which can be quite embarrassing, <laughs> for sure. Uh, so we have new contact, uh, bearing 8-4, our heading is 107, so they should be, oh, Bring about for 30 degrees off to the left. And right off the bat, we have three contacts. Four, five, eight, nine, and I'm nine. assuming that most of these are surface contacts, so I'm going to go up to 45 feet and use the ESMS and the periscope nine, to, um, four, five, eight, nine, nine. to classify these just to get an idea of exactly how far away they are. Up scope. Once again, the detection threshold's quite high, but I'll ignore that. Um, it's worth it for me to get the information about these guys. I don't know what that is. It looks like some smoke, but there's nothing there. And here is... Yeah, so Sierra 3 appears to be a, 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 a submerged contact. Lower the ESM mast. Now the, the depth is about the same as before, because I didn't really move four, in between zero, these engagements. Eight, so still at 578. I'm going to uh, dive to 500 feet and get busy uh, uh, classifying these contacts. Master 1 shows up as a Canaan. Uh, Sierra 3 is another November. And Master, Con, two, sonar. Master 2 is a is is an Oodle, as, eh? which makes sense. It, it has Con, that distinctive active sonar. Okay, so here is that unfortunate event that I was talking about. A little bit of bad luck. I was trying to move the screen around to get a better view of things, and by accident I clicked on the emergency blow button, and now I'm heading towards the surface uh, at maximum uh, maximum speed here, and I, I realize that there's nothing that I can do. I'm going to broach. So I decide that what I'm going to do is fire off all the weapons I possibly can to try to give these guys something to think about uh, while I'm on the surface and uh, passing 200 feet vulnerable to uh, to their attacks the wire. I even fire off the the one harpoon missile that I have loaded I figure Gun it's worth a try I decide to shoot it in the direction of the Udaloi actually all right so I'm actually I've actually broached now and I'm on the surface all three of my weapons, the, the wires have broken. And I'm on the surface waiting for the ballast tanks to be, the, the pressure to be built back up in the ballast tanks. It's counting down from, I believe, 90. You can see there in, in the ballast, the BAL field, 
Uh, it's counting down. Right now it's at 50 and it's counting. Once it gets to zero, I'll be able to dive again. But until then, I'm stuck on the surface. As you can see at that point, I wasn't really sure about that. I had never done this before, so I, I wasn't certain what I was looking at. But now that I've had a chance to look it over again, I can see that the information I that I needed was in that BAL field to know exactly how much longer it was going to be before I could dive. It's pretty quiet right now, which I, I thought, well, maybe I'm going to get away with this without uh, drawing any sort of heat. But then, next thing you know, things get a li get pretty hairy around here. Still got about 20 seconds left before I can dive. And that's when the first shell starts to hit. They're firing their guns at me. At first I thought it might be death charges. But I don't see anything falling underneath, so it looks like they're firing oh, artillery at me. This is where it really starts to get hairy. Got about five seconds left. Checking for damage. In case I can hit. Some really close calls there. So now I'm, I'm able to dive again. As soon as I do, I get uh, down. I, I set it to 450 feet. Set my speed. I know it's going to make me captivate, but I don't care. I have to get down as quickly as possible. Now, there's one shot there that I think would have actually hit me had I not started diving right away. Now I'm safe from um, artillery fire anyway. Make turns four, two, zero. Make. They're still trying, make though. Make turns four, five, nine. Con sonar, no longer cavitating. That was a bit hairy. And a bit embarrassing too, I'm afraid. So as you might expect, uh, I got more heat than just artillery. They did fire some torpedoes at me as well. So I'll have to evade those. Meanwhile, the November has the November has uh, succumbed to the, to the weapon that I fired in his direction. There were actually two torpedoes here. There's one right behind me and one off to the it would have been to the north a little bit. But uh, neither one of them really is a is a worry to me at any point during that. Maybe just a little bit at first when it was initially dropped, but Con, even still, formed. it never really Con, got too close. Lost contact. Master one. Last bearing zero five. So that was the cannon, actually. The interesting thing that happened there is that the weapon that I shot at the Uteloy went into countermeasure homing and went into the long sweeping turn, as you would expect it to do. And instead of hitting the Uteloy, coming back around and hitting the Uteloy, it actually locked onto the cannon, which was moving in that direction. And uh, it sucked up on the cannon instead. Either way, I don't care. As long as it hit something of value, that's all I care about. So now the Uteloy is still alive. I'm gonna, I've turned in in its direction, and I'm going to fire torpedo uh, number one at it. And we'll fast forward to when the weapon gets near the Udaloy. Con, fire control, weapon acquired. I'm not really sure why they program these ships with the AI they do or the, the tactics they do because it seems kind of silly to head this way at full speed towards me and then have to turn around and run away afterwards. 
Kind of seems like a silly thing to do, but I'm really not going to complain if they're going to make it that easy for me. So I stick around for a couple for a minute or two just to see if there's anything else around. Decide there probably is not, and so I'll uh, room, tube one ready. end the mission after loading, uh, reloading tube number one. There's nothing else in the area, and there was nothing else in the engagement either. A Kanan, a Udaloy, and a November. Still in the Barrent Sea. I'm going to try to get in the sights of that MPA. Not sure at first if it worked. So I'll just keep adjusting my position a little bit. Should have a better chance of being seen by that one. Unfortunately, that is part of this game, the waiting game. So I see an encounter group over... Oh, there's a bunch of them just popped up, so that's good. When it rains, it pours, I guess, eh? So, uh, contact bearing 204, our heading is 138. So they'll be off to the right. Close to 15,000 right, yards, sure, and uh, engage. They have contact zero one right off the bat, so I'll classify that immediately. I believe we're dealing with a submarine wolf pack here. And it appears to be a diesel electric type of boat. See, I'm not sure about that. Right off the bat, it looks like I, I uh, actually go back and forth a little bit. Dive at four, five, eight, dive, five. And I'm not really sure what I'm looking at. There's some confusion because um, it's quite noisy. And it, when I go up and, and raise the ESM mass, it does uh, get some signal up there uh, past the detection threshold. So I'm thinking maybe I'm dealing with a surface vessel. But when I turn the periscope into the to the bearing oh, or the the, where mass. I expect Sierra 1 to be, uh, it's not there so I think it's actually a submarine so knowing that information I'm gonna dive down fairly deep down 700 seven, feet, zero, zero feet dive by. and see if I can't classify this thing finally I don't usually have this much of a hard time classifying things but but the lines are kind of uh, you know faint looks like it might be a foxtrot or a Romeo, one or the other. Con sonar, Sierra 1 is classified as submerged submarine. I finally settle on a Romeo and I have a 71% solution on it already. Quite confident about uh, where the Romeo is. I'll turn in that direction. Lead the target just a little bit. Shoot 2 1, I heard. And shoot. Skip ahead to the point where the torpedo is almost there. Yeah, there's no uh, no debate on this one. And that's it for the Romeo. And I'm pretty sure he's the only one, and that's what uh, it seems to be. In this engagement, there was only the one diesel electric boat. Now the other two encounter groups are heading right for me. I think the surface group got there first. Uh, heading 158, bearing 158 are heading 144. This should be almost Break right in front of us. Quiet. There's a weak layer at about 94 Non-sonar feet. New contact bearing. I'm not really going to worry about four, that too much. One. Designated Sierra. One. But since it might be a, a surface group, I'm going to use my periscope an ESM mass to get a little bit more information. Make depth four, five, eight, dive by. Raise the ESM mass. Let's go on. Dive at four, five, eight, Detection dive threshold by. is high here as well, so it's a good chance there's something on the surface around here. I'll turn the periscope to the bearing of the Sierra 1. And the ESM mass picked up another contact. 
electronic contact echo two. So I'm able to get a good reading on both of those. I'll see if I can classify them after diving down to about 700 feet, 750 feet, 700 feet is a good, because the, the bottom here is 823, once again I want to leave myself some wiggle room, so I don't want to get too close to the bottom. Classified Master 1 is a Crest 2, and he's pinging me with sonar, so I'm going to uh, put a weapon on him right away. Activate it and set it to, to uh, run shallow. Weapon acquired. So here's the weapon as it approaches the Cresta 2. I found Cresta 2s to be pretty nimble. Uh, they can uh, definitely decal torpedoes. So it makes me feel a lot more confident to have the wire. Contact breaking up. Master 2 has come and gone. I've not been able to classify it before it did drop off the sonar scope. But I'm going to do what I can here to get more information about Master 2. <clears throat> I'm tempted to shoot anyway, knowing that he's probably heading straight for me. But instead of doing that, I'm going to head up to Periscope Depth and take a look around. Once I get to Periscope Depth, I'm actually just going to raise my radar mast to get a good bearing on Master 2. Once I get a good bearing, then I will use, uh, then I'll fire a torpedo at him and classify him on the while well, it's on the way. One as well. Con sonar master two is classified as escort. Looks like a cash in. Con fire control weapon. Now acquired. I can see that it's actually not a cash in. I did misclassify this. I think it's a Krivak actually now. But uh, that line up near 1500 was hard to see before. Master two, last bearing one. So I thought seven, it was a cash nine, in. Contact breaking up. Doesn't really matter that much, I guess. Either way, it's dead. So, so those are the two only vessels on this mission. The next one. Looks like uh, it's raining, a strong breeze. Its bearing is 325. We're heading 57, so it'll be off to the left, close to 15,000 yards. So I'd expect there to be a lot of surface noise. And when I check out the conditions tab, I see that that's actually exactly what is happening. I don't have a contact to start with, can't hear anything in the area. So when I check the conditions tab, which I will do here soon, it's 109 decibels. So hunting submarines in this in these conditions is going to be really challenging. Besides, since I don't have to be here, I just won't be. After looking around with my active sonar for a little bit to hopefully find something, I decide it's not even worth my while. And I back out and head back to the strategic map. Con sonar, switching the passive search. So there's nothing in the area. Apparently there was a foxtrot and a tango. They didn't want to be heard. I probably would have had a hard time finding him anyway, so that's fine. No harm, no foul there. I get to back out and it doesn't hurt hurt me or the Admiral in any way. So we see another submarine encounter group heading up our way. Uh, bearing 165, our heading is 96, so it'll be about 70 degrees off to the right. close to 15,000 yards, check my Great tubes, and then in initiate this engagement. We do have a contact right off the bat. It's a submarine, obviously. And I think it's going to be another diesel boat. Either a Foxtrot or a Romeo, Con one or the other. Sierra 1 is classified as submerged submarine. So it looks like a Romeo. I'm going to adjust my depth and adjust my course to point towards the target 
it's at 44%. I feel like that's more than enough information to shoot on. I have a fairly good indication of the bearing, and so I'll just send a weapon down that bearing, and eventually it will encounter him. Noisemaker bearing 180. It does eventually acquire the Romeo, and Con, not too far out. Scratch one Romeo. Not a very fair fight, but I'll take what I can get. There's nothing else nearby. He was the only one in this encounter. I'm down to eight torpedoes left, so I'm starting to think that it might be time to return to base here soon. But we'll continue for now. Eight is enough to for at least one more encounter, I'd say. And here it comes. I barely have to move it all. It heads right up for me. So bearing 207, our heading is 175, so it'll be off to the right by about 30 degrees. I'll reload tomb number one, close to 15,000 yards. And then on this one, a little bit more bad luck. Instead of hitting shift S for ultra quiet, I hit shift D for the noise maker, which I have done before. It's kind of embarrassing, but it is what it is. Sometimes that happens. You're not careful of what you're doing. So there's a mod, there's a strong layer here. I decide that since these will be submarines, I'm probably better off to get under under the layer. Even though I already do have a contact, I'm going to descend below the layer to hopefully get more contacts and hopefully get away from this noise maker as well. So this will be a nuclear wolf pack with two of the best boats the Soviets have to offer. Two Sierra classes that I have to worry about. I don't have any time to fool around here. I want to uh, get a weapon in the water towards the closest one uh, as quickly as I can because he's a threat. No, there's no question about that. Con sonar, Sierra 3 is cavitated. I fire at, this, at Sierra 2 as Con, well. Room, uh, two, that two, one, ready. the wire breaks, so I'm at the mercy of the internal guidance Con, on that. Five, seven, and it looks zero, like Sierra zero, 2 was a lot closer by. than Sonar thought, and that weapon locked on and took him out without Con, me even control, seeing it. I would have I would have uh, switched to the weapon view had I known it was going to uh, strike so quickly, but uh, didn't have time, unfortunately. So this Con, is on Sierra 1. That's Sierra it for one, that advanced two, three, Soviet seven, new boat. And uh, a third contact that appear in the meantime. It's an Alpha, which is really fast, but really loud, and sonar is not very good, so I'm not too worried about the Alpha. He's quite close by, so odds are he's not going to have a chance to outrun this torpedo. And he's heading right in my direction anyway, so... And that's it for the Alpha. I believe that'll be the only, that'll be the last target here. Usually they come in, in packs of three, so. And that's it. Two Sierras and one Alpha down on this mission. I have five torpedoes left. I believe it'll be a great time to head back to Holy Lock to resupply here, so that's what I'll do. We'll skip ahead. I'm going to uh, refill my torpedo room with Mark 48s. I'll put in one harpoon so they did launch one at that uh, at that, at that point when I was uh, did the emergency blow by accident so I'll fill up the, um, the uh, torpedo room save the game and head back to the summary screen so we've been 87 days at war now sunk 133 ships for a total tonnage of 802,010 tons of Soviet shipping so thank you very much for stopping by once again for episode lucky number 13. I'm going to drop another episode here in the next day or two. I already have the footage and I have it cut up. I'm just going to uh, drop it in the next couple days. And uh, until then, thanks for stopping by and have a great day.